great today on ARSN Television, Abuja, Nigeria. I am Khadija Uluwatuin. I mean, this is a program where we bring to you innovations and anything new about agriculture in Nigeria and, of course, around the world. Today's episode of the program will be taking a focus on the effect of rural urban migration on agricultural production. We have the Dean of Faculty of Agriculture and President of Professor Akim Oyari who will be taking us down on the effect of um, this topic, that is, uh, effect of um, rural to urban migration in agricultural production. Thank you for joining us on the program, sir. So many effects as regards to urban, uh, rural urban migration this time around, where you see people are uh, beginning to move for uh, greener pastures. You see youth leaving uh, their uh, local settlements, going to the city to say they are going to look for. And you know, uh, it is these people that basically, basically are uh, involved in agriculture. What are these, what are these, supposed to pretend for the agricultural uh, production system? You know, when we talk of, uh, about migration, migration is uh, part of uh, innate of human being, mm -hmm. or animal in general. Yes. Let's start from the concept of animal, because uh, whether we are homo sapiens or oh. we, we belong, wherever we belong to in the classification of animal, we are part of the animal kingdom as well. That's why we have the kingdom plantae, kingdom and animalia. I don't want it to look like a glass. So mm -hmm. the fact remains that as animal, we have an animal instinct and animal behavior that is part of us. And the tenet is for survival. Mm -hmm. we, the concept is you cannot stay where you don't have resources, where you don't have food, where you don't have quality life. You can never stay there. So, and the competition within that, the, 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 the ecosystem, the competition within the ecosystem is responsible for people to move, whether they jump out from one country to the other, whether they move from one community to the other, whether they move from one village to the other. Even there are concepts in the animal kingdom that we call territoriality. Lizards usually do that a lot. Lion and a host of other leopard, they do that. When you, when you talk about the concept of territoriality, where a king or a leader of a group, we want to dominate, we don't even want any other one to come in. Some people migrate not only for agricultural commodities, some people migrate because of women. If you look at history within the Quran and the Bible, you see so many phases of people that migrate because they want to go and marry somewhere and they stay there. Mm. So the concept of migration is known as part of the behavior of animal to react to unfavorable environmental condition. That's migration. Mm. So it's not only human beings that migrate. We have locust gregaria, that's the grasshopper, that used to really move from one country to the other. We have quela quela bears that move from one country to the other, or from one region to the other. We have some, uh, we have a man, uh, what do we call it, monkey that moves. So we have so many migratory pests. We have uh, Soroptera fujipada. That's the army war, and they host of others that migrate. So it's not war, and the major reason why they migrate is that they are looking for a place to do what? One, to have adequate food. Two, to roost. Roost means to reproduce. Okay. So that there will be sustainability of their generation, and there will be regeneration of their population. That is the same thing that happened to human beings. Because the, the concept, your question goes to the agri, uh, that's the, 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 the practitioner within the agri medium, that's the rural uh, dwellers. Mm. That's what your question is. So the rural dweller that wants to leave his community, nobody will be interested if his community is comfortable, is attractive. Nobody will be interested to move out of that, his comfort zone, and go elsewhere. So it means that there is a reason for them to move. 
So, but the danger of this is that the recent research is showing that most of the population that we have in our rural community in Africa, as well as Nigeria, are aged people. The aged people that are already above 60, they are the majority within our rural area now. Because most of their children, most of their wards have left them because life is not comfortable, life is not attractive within the rural community. So, it means that government must take a deliberate act to stop these uh, unwanted movements. And that is the same thing that happened to, to the essence in which people within the city now are now Japan. Their own, they did not call it rural urban migration now. It's now migration from a country to another country. And they don't know. Majority of them, over a larger number of them that goes outside, find it difficult to come back because the place is not at, as attractive as they, think. as they think. And they are not, uh, they are not better than why they are at home. So, they, 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 whether, f whether locally, whether the migration is done locally or the migra migration is done globally, each of those migrations that we are talking about is about uh, so for survival and to get resources to sustain life. So for sustainable livelihood, it means that you must move from one area to the other. Because when you know an environment is not suitable for you, you have to move. So from time immemorial, people have been moving. But the aspect of that we are talking about now is what is the impact of this in our agricultural production? One, it has is reducing, is depleting the population of active workforce within the rural area. And it's this active workforce within the rural area that are responsible because as of today now, we still have over 78 75% of sustainable practice in agriculture. Our level of mechanization in the country is not more than 25%. So which means that if we are thinking of uh, having a 25% uh, uh, population doing the modern agricultural practice, it means that uh, if care is not taken, if we don't take care, if we don't take care of our of our rural populace, if we continue with this trend where they are leaving the community, very soon there will not be food on our table. God is the subsistence farmer that are responsible for most of the commodity that we have on our table now. So there must be a, 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 a consensual uh, move by the government to tend to stop this by making one live attractive for the rural dweller to making resources, all the needed resources for livelihood to be available at the doorstep of the rural dweller. So with that, you are, you are now talking about the concept of why do I need to go to town? I have a favorable market. Why do I need to go to town? I have high return on investment. Why do I need to go to town? I can market on my phone from my community. Why do I need to go to town? I have uh, uninterrupted power supply. Why do I need to go to town? I have a uh, post harvest uh, handling of my crop. Why do I need to go to town? I have processing section that are very at my doorstep. So if life is like that, the rural community people will be well sufficient they will be well satisfied and they will not be struggling to come to the city. Coming to the city is so difficult for them because by the time they come to the city, there's no place to stay. No house, no building, no resources, because life in the villages are cheaper than life in the city. So they don't even have the resources to manage in the city. So, 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 and if 
for them to return, they are already feeling ashamed because they've told their friends, their relatives, their family that they are now going to Portacourt, they are going to Lagos, they are going to Abuja, they are going to Kano, they are going to Kaduna, they are going to the bigger city. So they will now find it difficult to now go back that I want to go back to my rural area. That, oh, how, what would they be saying? And that is the same thing that happened to people that jump out that go and the place is not favorable to them. They will, they, they, will, they will be feeling ashamed to come back to Nigeria. They will just say, oh, let me stay there. Let me stay there. Let me stay there until... Uh, so the, 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 the fact remains that the best that can, be, that can happen is for government to take it as the first priority to make habitation of our rural community to be attractive to the younger ones. Even in the, in the, in the village, you have good uh, internet connection. You have good power supply. You have good health services. You have where you can do modernized agricultural practice not just doing cutlass and old drudgery. Mm. Where you have tractors that can come to your feet, where you have a power tiller, where you have post harvest, uh, handler, treasure, and um, flash dryer, granite uh, decorticator, maize silo, and a host of other modernized way of practicing agriculture. Where you have a, tab, a tablet that you can market on your tablet or your phone, you can market to Chile, to India, to China, to US. The Alibabas and the host of other come to Nigeria to mop this commodity. So if there is access road that gets into that community, because most of our rural area, if you go there now, you feel ashamed. Because there are some of them, as we are in the rainy season now, they are cut off. That they cannot come to the to the to the interland. They cannot come into the interland until the dry season. Because the water we have cut them up and no government has done the covet for them to cross to the other end. So there are there are this 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 are uh, issue that government must take as a priority. Where most of our commodities are are not accessible by road. Some of them are not accessible by waterway. You can imagine if we now have a, a, a access of having flying boat and a host of others that we can go and assess the, 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 the blue economy within the stream, the upstream, the onshore, and a host of others like that. It means those farmers that are involved in water, a, a, in production of a fish, crabs, and a host of other things that are water resources. We get, we have access as quick as possible for their commodity to get to the city. You know, if, if they can get it to the city, they will sell at a higher price than one intermediary, one middleman, or middle, let me say, we we'll still call it middleman, or we are forgetting that the women are available. <laughs> Whether maybe we now have a middle woman. So we, we just come and now buy at a ridiculous price from those. Okay, okay. And when they buy, they are buying, and the farmer will continue to be poor, and the younger ones will not see the work, the, what their parents are involved in, as being a source of livelihood. Okay, yes, uh, we've heard from uh, we heard from our guests on the effects of uh, of uh, this rural urban migration. We take a quick break on the program. Continue, stay tuned.
on agricultural production and uh, uh, we've had uh, Professor Yeri Day uh, take us down memory lane as to the reasons why we have uh, uh, agricultural production being affected because of this rural urban uh, you know, migration. And now we're taking a focus on now uh, what is the possible way forward. We, you've told us about um, uh, you know, infrastructures not being on ground and the rest of it. Aside infrastructures, we know there are places that, um, uh, there, are, there are rural areas that are not rural as rural that we think, yet we still have um, uh, farmers migrating. What can government do in these areas so that we quickly wrap, wrap up? The, the first thing is, um, I think government needs to subsidize livelihood within the rural community. You know, most of the countries that we, we find their population, the, the richest men in the world in the developed economy are farmers because government has produced adequate infrastructure and they sustain. The, 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 what the government does is to see a way of subsidizing life. For example, now if we now have a situation in which if you are staying in the rural community, they do that to teachers. Teachers that teach in rural community have some uh, some uh, uh, subsidy, some some additional fund that they give to them. So if we we deliberately deliberately take this as having palliative, having subsidized livelihood. It can be in form of a uh, commodity, it can be in form of um, uh, finance, it can be uh, in form of uh, um, health services, that if you are in a rural area, you don't need to pay for your treatment. So if you are not paying for your treatment in the rural area, all the hospital in the rural area can be free. In the rural area, there can be a way, it was done some time ago in one government that gave them phone for free. So these are things that we must make sure that we subsidize the livelihood apart from the inputs that government can give to them. If in the rural area they know that they have free access to medical care, they have free access to uh, a, a, a reduced tariff for electricity, they have free a, a reduced tariff, a reduced cost of processing uh, their commodity. They have a reduced cost of uh, cultivating their land or engaging in livestock or cattle production. Nearly people or everybody in the city will go to the rural area because they now know that government has taken charge of the required uh, the required uh, aspect that will sustain their livelihood. If government has taken charge of uh, uh, my menu, that I now have subsidized food, instead of buying at 800 naira in, uh, in Guagualada or in uh, Ama, and now if I'm in the Yebu, inside Yebu, at the other end, that those same commodities will be sold at uh, 200 at subsidized rates based on government. You know, everybody will just say, city, stay. Well, let me go and stay in the rural area. This is the same thing that happened to the issue of house rent in, uh, in the FCT. You see that in the evening. In, in the morning, you see everybody rushing to the city. In the evening, everybody decides the city because of house rent, because of a, a room would cost over about close to one point something million to two million. They, they run to the, uh, the, what do you call it, the, the, the support of uh, the city and go and rent at affordable prices. So if government deliberately does that to farmer too, where farmer can have subsidized input for their production, subsidized electricity, subsidized uh, health care, subsidized uh, water resources, I think all of us will want to go and be a farmer. But if government did not do it deliberately, nobody will stay there. So there must be a deliberate act by the government to now take uh, it to assisting. If you see the way the health services you have in the rural community are, yeah, you'll, be, you'll be shocked. Some of them don't have drugs, and some uh, talk that are not even trained. We now go and open a uh, patient, patient medicine store there. 
and be doing the job of the nurses and the doctor and be killing most of the populace. So the, the advent is government must be able to subsidize livelihood, give palliative, assist in their, their, their farm work, and ensure that they are secured. The major, the major problem that the farmers are having now is all about security. Government should make sure that all our rural area all should be secured, security should be fortified so that they can go to their farms. Majority of them cannot even go to their farms again because of insecurity. Because the, 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 the what do we call it, the rustlers and a host of others have taken charge. They are even asking some of them to pay tax. These are areas that government need to address, to address security and ensure that life in the rural area is safe for the farmer. Thank you very much for coming on the program, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, yes, yeah, so we've heard it. Uh, the federal government should ensure that security is one thing that is being addressed and tackled with uh, a very strong and high hands. On that note, to wrap it up on the program I have today on this episode, uh, join us again. Same time, same station next week. I am Kadija Uluwatoin. I'm insane. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>